Hey, I'm Zach Zeller, America's number one expert in snacking for busy people. And today we have a question from Dan in Southern California asking if he could lose weight eating whatever he wants. And so this is, this is going to be a two-part video. Uh, the first part is we're going to tackle like the all that you want part. Uh, and so basically it's very popular in nutrition now to come up with solutions that people could eat a lot of junk stuff and still have, you know, very low body fat, muscular definition, that kind of stuff. Um, it does work. I've tried a few of those, but it doesn't uh, do anything for your health. And so I have just three main ones right here. There's, uh, if it fits into your micros, macros, uh, cheat days, and intermittent fasting. And so uh, the premise of if it fits into your macros is that uh, you are basically looking at the quality of food, the quantity of food you could eat in a day, right? Uh, without gaining too much weight or without uh, eating too little. And then you're just kind of putting in different kind of junk foods that fit that profile. So let's say you need to eat a certain amount of carbohydrates, a certain amount of fat, a certain amount of protein each day to continue to gain muscle, lose weight, stuff like that, uh, which kind of varies depending on the person and the genetics and how you train. Um, but that's beyond the scope of this video right now. And so with the if it fits into your micro, macros approach, you could eat like pizza and donuts and steak and all of that as long as you don't exceed those macronutrient boundaries. And so it has no regard for health, no regard for food allergies, um, different things like that. And so it works if you're just looking to lose weight, uh, then try it out. But it'll do nothing for your energy It'll do nothing to improve your sleep, improve um, you know, your heart health, fight chronic disease, a lot of stuff like that. And so uh, similarly, cheat days, they play around with two hormones, uh, leptin and ghrelin. And I mean, obviously there's a lot of communication between different hormones, um, but those are the two main ones. And so, uh, leptin is the fullness hormone, ghrelin is the hunger hormone. When you don't eat, you have ghrelin build up, which seems to trigger increasing levels of human growth hormone and stuff like that, that spares protein and shifts you to burn more fat. Uh, when you have a lot of leptin, it really opens the floodgates uh, and says that your body has a lot of energy and feel free to burn up fat stores, things like that. And so typically you'll eat very well most of the week, uh, and then you'll have a cheat day or a cheat meal or you know something along that line where you just pick out, eat a lot, and yeah, and then coast the rest of the week on your increased metabolism. And so again, I've tried it. It's a lot of fun to try and eat huge amounts of food. Um, but it doesn't really focus in on your health. And so uh, eating a lot um, can be difficult uh, for a lot of people. Um, also, it doesn't really uh, mentally prepare you for eating a lot. That, yeah, it doesn't really mentally prepare you um, because you may even overeat on a cheat day. Uh, the idea is that you eat until like you're satisfied, like you don't force yourself to eat more than that would make you uncomfortably full. Like when you're sitting at Thanksgiving and you know, you have to undo your pants and, and you know, you have to like undo your belt and just kind of lay on the couch and pass out and take a nap because you're that full. A lot of people overdo cheat days and don't get a lot of the benefits from it. Uh, and so it can be difficult to kind of muster up that self-control. Uh, the last one is intermittent fasting. 
And so sometimes it's used with cheat days that you'll go on a cheat day and then the next day you'll fast, which is not eating, uh, only having like fluids, which is water, uh, for 18 to 36 hours afterwards. Now, uh, intermittent fasting is definitely a more advanced technique because again, psychologically, you have, you have to get used to it. And so when you start off, different levels of hormones can build up and force you to overeat. And then you feel like you fail, you get frustrated. Um, it doesn't become something that's sustainable and part of your life. So you have to definitely ease into it. But intermittent fasting can be a good tool if you eat normally for the rest of the time. So you don't get into that trap that you end up uh, eating a lot when you do eat because you know that you're going to fast. Because it's it defeats the purpose of the fast. And so um, those methods typically are used to allow you to eat kind of whatever you want in terms of if you want to eat uh, you know, more of the processed, fatty, salty foods uh, that hit all of those receptors that say, damn, that food is tasty in your brain. Uh, now for part two, I'm going to talk about my solution that I feel lets you eat whatever you want, allows you, <coughs> lets you eat whatever you want, uh, put your health first, and is very easily sustained for weeks, months, years, a lifetime. So I'm Zach Zeller from thesnackhacker.com. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Any questions or comments, put them below. And don't forget to subscribe and find out when I put out a new video. Happy snacking.